Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's daily devotional. So our devotional today is going to come from an article that was posted yesterday. Uh, obviously, Wednesday night, uh, or well, Thursday morning, technically, uh, the uh, Texas's new law, uh, heart, called the Heartbeat Law, uh, on abortion uh, was uh, allowed to go into effect. It's certainly going to go through a whole bunch of legal hurdles and, and there's going to be a lot more. Uh, the, the, the Supreme Court ruled that it wasn't going to prevent it, uh, but that it was not a judgment of its constitutionality. So uh, there, there, there's definitely going to be more uh, that's going to end up being, being uh, said about it and so forth. But uh, this article that was posted, um, it, it, it's interesting. So I, I've, I've been debating whether or not to to look at the concept of the abortion laws and so forth, because a lot of it's beyond the actual issue of abortion, a lot of it's politics, a lot of it's ideological. Uh, but uh, this particular article is, uh, it kind of threw me for a loop, to tell you the truth. Uh, so this is actually from the perspective of a Jewish rabbi. And the title of the article is, Texas's abortion ban is against my religion. As a rabbi, I will defy it if necessary. Uh, Judaism teaches that potential life is sacred. Nevertheless, our religion also teaches that potential life is not the same as actual life, that a fetus is not a human being. Uh, he and I'm not going to read the whole article. He talks about uh, advising a woman to get an abortion. He uh, thought it would be best for her. Whatever he says, Judaism teaches that potential life is sacred. Nonetheless, our religion also teaches that potential life is not the same as actual life. That a fetus is not a human being. This is directly derived from Scripture. I thought that was interesting. Therefore, even during labor, the pregnant woman's life has precedence over the life of the fetus. And if we have reason to believe a pregnancy will be a serious threat to a woman's well-being, whether that be mentally, physically, or otherwise, then she will be counseled to abort the fetus and to do so in a way that maximally protects her own health. Many books have been written about this, but these are the rules that guide Jewish law and those of us who seek to fulfill it in the practice of our religion. Each case is unique but the principles remain the same. We would never celebrate the termination of potential life, but neither would we regard it as automatically forbidden. As my doctoral advisor put it, Judaism is neither pro-life or pro-choice. It depends on the life and it depends on the choice. Um, thus, when this woman came to me for direction, talking about the one earlier in the paragraph we didn't read, I told her not that she could have an abortion, but that she must have an abortion, that the God of my understanding would want her to do it. My action would likely be considered a violation of SB 8, the new Texas law making it illegal to assist someone in pursuing an abortion. Um, it would, uh, th th thus, this law is a restriction on the practice of my religion. It would likewise impose a religious standard upon anyone from any religion who believes abortion is not always the evil that our state officials believe it to be. Uh, so, uh, the last, let's think this last paragraph, uh, so basically, he says that uh, you know, if if I believe you know that that Judaism or that if I believe somebody needs to have an abortion, I'm gonna tell them to do it and defy the the laws of Texas and tell them to do it, uh, and that if you know if if that puts me on the wrong side of the law, then so be it. In fact, he says, I don't relish the thought of being sued by some bounty hunter, but you know what? Jews have suffered the right to practice their religion before and probably will again. So go ahead, Texas, come and get me. <sighs> um, so I, I would be very, very curious. I obviously, and obviously some of this is, uh, well, it, it, it's interesting because the situation that... It, is existing here. I don't know what in the world he's talking about. This is directly derived from scripture that a potential life is not an actual life. I have no idea what that's about. I've never heard that before uh, from the concept of Judaism. And I have never heard of of Judaism teaching the necessity for an abortion. That's really what he's arguing here, is that if it's going to be a detriment to the mother, then it's a necessity, and God would want her to do it. 
Uh, I've never heard that before. Uh, so this is this is this is new. But he doesn't include. He says this is directly derived from scripture. Okay. Well, what's the scriptures? Because I don't see any script, uh, scriptures that uh, describe anything like what he's talking about. In Genesis 25 and in verse 21, Isaac, he pleads with the Lord for uh, Rebekah. The Lord granted his plea. Rebekah conceives. And then in verse 22, so the children are still in the womb. They're still technically fetuses, apparently, uh, until they're actually born. But the children struggled within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? She went to, to inquire the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger. The other the older shall serve the younger. Notice the scriptures say the children struggled within her. Not the fetuses, not the masses of tissue. The children struggled. Uh, and we're not going to look at, at all the possible scriptures that we could look at. But Jeremiah chapter 1, for instance. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4, where the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Notice God says, before I formed you. Not your mother and father formed you. I formed you. That means that this life isn't formed by nature or by, by man's uh, uh, interactions. But God is creating this life. And I think that's very important to point out that even now, uh, biologists still can't definitively show how life begins. They can see all the, the uh, genetic processes, the chemical processes and whatnot, but they can't see where, where the actual life begins, where consciousness begins, where, where the, how all of that is created. God forms children. He forms babies. And he refers to before I formed your fetus in the womb or before I formed you as a fetus before you became a person or an actual life. That's not how God says this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Okay, certainly God, and some people take this well, God knew what Jeremiah was going to be. He knew that Jeremiah was going to become a person. Well, yeah, God has foresight and God certainly knows what's going to happen. But God says that he formed Jeremiah in the womb and that uh, God knew him, knew his soul, his spirit. Of course, God puts these spirits uh, as, as these babies are conceived. He puts them there, creates them, however that works. Uh, but God, it's as if Jeremiah existed. Okay, Jeremiah was a person as of the moment he began forming in the womb. And then, uh, I mean, and there are multiple other places as well. Uh, but it's interesting because, and we could go to New Testament. Obviously, in the New Testament, we've got uh, the example of uh, Elizabeth and Mary when they were pregnant. And the leaves are the, the leap. The babe leapt within her. Uh, with uh, John the Baptist, when he was in the womb, he uh, he leapt within her when she came close to Mary. Uh, and it, it was interesting because the, the, that term "babe" is the same term for baby that's already born. Okay, but remember, we're talking about Judaism here. Okay, so I, I want to focus on Old Testament. I want to stay in the Old Testament range because including New Testament for, you know, someone who's a rabbi probably isn't going to make any difference. So uh, the other scripture I wanted to look at was Exodus. Exodus chapter 21. Because this is interesting because, you know, he, he made the case that our religion makes a differentiation between potential life and real life. And that uh, a baby or a, a fetus that's in the womb isn't considered an actual life. Well, that goes in direct contradiction to what God says in Exodus 21 and in verse 22. Well, starting in verse 22. So this is the law of God being given to Israel, okay, to the Jews. If men fight and hurt a woman with child so that she gives birth prematurely yet no harm follows, he shall surely be punished accordingly as the woman's husband imposes on him, and he shall pay as the judge determined. 
But if any harm follows, you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. The, the concept here is if an individual with who is pregnant, okay, if, if someone hurts a, a pregnant woman and harm follows, you shall give life for life. Which is to say, okay, well, what if the baby dies? Well, the baby dies. That's considered a life. And that's exactly what the, what the differentiation of verse 22 and 23. Men fight and hurt a woman with child, not with fetus, with child, so that she gives birth prematurely yet no harm follows. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it'll be whatever the husband imposes on him because his wife was hurt. But if harm does follow, the baby dies. Okay, the baby dies within her. Or the baby dies once it's born. Or the mother and the, the baby die. That's two lives. Okay, it, it's, it's interesting because God makes a differentiation. He makes laws to account for what happens with pregnant women. Why would that be a matter? Why would that matter? Why would that matter at all? If there's no, if there's a differentiation between potential life and real life, it, it's just a fetus. It's a mass. It's a tumor. So why would God make any differentiation about a woman with child? Why not just say woman or pregnant woman um, with, with fetus? <laughs> you know, why, why is it that that a woman with a baby in her, that that it would be considered the death of, if the child dies, that's a life for life. Why is that? And so the idea, in fact, even the idea of the child dying, for that matter, uh, it suggests that the child's alive. And it, it's, it's, you know, it, it goes in direct contradiction to the thought process that God actually, or that there were, that Judaism specifically requires women to receive an abortion. I, again, I have never heard that before, and I don't, and I, I haven't done a lot of research on it. So you know, maybe this is just a a certain sect. Maybe this is just a a certain minority that believe this way. Uh, Maybe it's widespread and I've just never heard it before. Uh, but I thought that was extremely strange that this individual is making that case. I appreciate his conviction in being willing to go against man's laws to obey God's laws as he sees it, at least from that you know perspective. But that's not God's law. As far as, as, far as I can read in the Old Testament, that's not what the law of Moses was. It's not what the law would be for Judaism. Now, if he's referring to scriptures, scriptures written since the divine inspiration of God, written by man, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know the Jewish Talmud and that sort of thing. But uh, it, it, it just, it's, it's interesting to me that that's how he took that, uh, and that that's his, his, his. Uh, kind of interpretation on that. So it's it's interesting because all of this is given to us in the Old and New Testaments. You know, nowhere in the Old or New Testament for that matter ever considers any differentiation between a baby in the womb versus a baby once it's been born. It, there's no there's no different terms for it. There's no different considerations for it. The laws are the same under the the law of Moses are the exact same. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference. And so if a baby is a baby, whether it's inside the womb or out, then how can we call it not, how can we call it a potential life versus a real life? In fact, that's what the heartbeat laws kind of designed to, to kind of put the focus on is that as soon as there's a heartbeat, that's life. Okay. And, and I, I think that that's an interesting it's an interesting take on it uh, in terms of the law itself here in Texas. Um, and some, some, some have argued, well, it's not actually a heartbeat. It's a, what did they refer to it? It's a, uh, some kind of a, a, a 
a rhythm, uh, some kind of a life rhythm, or, or some some it, it, the way the way they the, the the critics are skeptical, you know, people who are trying to fight again. Oh, well, it's not an actual heartbeat. The heart isn't formed yet. It's just a a rhythm of the flesh or something like that. And um, and and it's true. While the heart may not be fully formed yet, it is a separate rhythm to that of the mother, signifying a separation of of life. That this is its own rhythm. Uh, own own beat, if you will, from the mother's beat, and that that shows it's it's something different. It's it's not just a tumor. It's it's a life. It's a baby. So, uh, I, you know, I didn't really want to make uh, you know because we, we could talk. We could talk. I mean, right, and in fact, I have I, years ago, a couple of years ago, three years ago or so, I preached a sermon on abortion. Uh, in fact, it was. I think the first sermon we ever put up on YouTube uh, uh, it's been viewed something like I think it has the most views of any video we've, we've posted uh, for for our, our sermon videos uh, it's got like I don't know 600 700 views something like that but um, and, and we kind of talk about some of these some of these these aspects and uh, so I, I didn't want to like preach a sermon for our daily devotional but I, I wanted to look at just the Old Testament uh, and what it says in comparison to what this, and again, I wish, I wish this guy had, had provided some details. I wish he'd provided some sort of, of reference or, or scripture or even a quote or, or something. But he says, this is directly derived from scripture. You say derived, that, that suggests that it's not spelled out necessarily it's assumed it's interpreted it's you know that, that's how they view it it's derived from scripture but it's not at least not any scripture that i've seen now if there are scriptures that actually point out that there's a difference between uh a baby or, or, or a baby that's in the womb is not actually a baby then by all means i, I want to see those and if there's actually scripture suggesting that a woman should choose uh, herself over the life of her baby, or as they would call fetus, then I want to see that. Or that God commands that that be done to protect herself. I want to see it. But at least any scripture for which we, we have uh, divine inspiration, uh, I, don't, I don't see that anywhere. So... Uh, just in case you happen to, you know, because this is kind of being discussed at length now, not just in Texas, but in, in the whole nation, because of the situation in Texas, um, this may end up being a renewed uh, consideration or thought process or um, discussion among religious people. And it's possible you may know someone who's Jewish. Uh, or someone who has studied Judaism, you might ask them. Uh, maybe it'd be a door, a way to open a door there to, to kind of talk about it and ask them, you know, what what does Judaism teach about abortion? Because I'm I, I'm really curious to find out if if this is a widespread uh, belief amongst Jews that that abortion is not only okay but is actually required in the event that it's uh, uh, life threatening or or, or and in fact he even. Uh, let's see. Yeah, to the woman's well-being, so that, whether that be mental, physical, or otherwise. So, if a woman even feels as if she's in any way threatened, uh, they think it, it's required uh, to to abort the fetus. So, uh, but but it's interesting. You know, you, you watch sometimes you watch you know movies or sitcoms and stuff especially through the 90s and, and the early 2000s when kind of the, the whole abortion thing was really it's always been a, it's always been a big deal but uh, even even people on the other side of the argument people who believe in abortion a woman's right it's just a fetus when you watch TV shows and stuff like that that are pro pro choice is what they call it even they make references to like when they have a there's a pregnant lady on the on the show or she at least she's portraying a pregnant lady they, they refer to it as oh your baby uh you know and, and and they refer to the baby as a person they refer to the baby as a as a life 
not a fetus. Oh, your tumor's looking great today. <laughs> they don't say stuff like that. You know, uh, your, your, your belly's getting the big baby must be getting big. No, they don't say the tumor's getting big. The fetus is getting, no, they say the baby's getting big. It, it's a life. And uh, uh, I know that there's, you know, the argumentation and so forth over a person's rights and whatnot. And again, that, that focuses more on the ideology and politics side of it. The fact of the matter is, people, this is not new. Uh, the people have been, have been doing things to abort babies for a long, long time. They haven't always been safe. They haven't always been, uh, uh, you know, have the actual outcome that they were seeking. But, but man has always inserted himself to do things that he doesn't want to do. Uh, and even flying in the face of God's direction in the scriptures of respect for all life, even life that isn't born yet, uh, man's still going to do what he wants to do. Uh, and I, I don't think just because it's been banned in Texas, that's not going to keep people from, from having abortions. Uh, it, it may not make it as, as uh, obvious or as uh, prevalent. They may do a better job of hiding it or whatever, but uh, it's, it's, it's not going to change a lot. Uh, but the discussion about it, the opportunity to talk to people about it, not from a political perspective, not from a, a ideological perspective, but from a religious perspective. Well, what does God say? How does God view the baby inside a woman before it's born? At, at any point, whether it's in the first trimester or second or third trimester, at what point does, does God consider that baby to be a baby? And there is no distinction. It's a baby from the moment it's conceived. And uh, so, uh, just, just, just some thoughts that I had when I read that article uh, just kind of threw me for a loop and I wanted to, to share it with you guys. All right, so uh, our next day of the devotion will be on Monday, Lord willing, at 6.30. I hope to see you all then. You'll have a great weekend and uh, y'all stay safe. Thanks, everybody.